Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I like dirty pretty things. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Dirty Pretty Things, which released in 2002 from writer Stephen Knight and director Stephen Frears. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Chiweto Ejifor, who plays Aqua. Aqua is a illegal immigrant living in London and he's trying to hold down multiple jobs all over the city. He's also staying on the sofa of another girl played by Audrey Tattoo and as he starts to uncover mystery transplants going on in the hotel that he works in, he realises that his past might help him escape this dark future. One of the fuckers want to put me on his visa card? Oh, my blooming feet. Lucky I don't work standing up. <laughs> what? And the Africa's where you come from. So I wasn't particularly aware of Stephen Freer's uh, library of work. Mm. Uh, it's only really, really when I checked to see what films he had done prior to this and I immediately recognised My Beautiful Laundriette from 1985 yeah. and Dangerous Liaisons from mm. uh, 1988. But I do recognise the writer for this film who yeah. has written the majority of the Peaky Blinders TV series. Oh, right, okay. So I was like, this is an interesting combination. A director who likes that sort of gritty realism yeah. uh, with a writer who's been doing that sort of stuff as well, but more the crime side of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this film, I'd heard of it only the once, and that was Oscar time when the film was released. I think it got nominated. I don't know if it won. Uh, yeah. But it was a film that was like... That looked like a good scene, interesting point, and then I'd never heard of this film again. That's it. Like for me, I'd I'd never heard of this movie. Um, it it felt more like a um, BBC One drama. Well, it I... is a British movie, co-funded yeah. by the BBC. That's it. That's <laughs> it. It felt like it might have been a, like a twelve episode, you know, over a couple of week kind of series, but in fact, they've actually shoved it all into one big film and then then set it out there. Um, but it's it's. It's so brilliantly done. Like, like you said, this director, I hadn't seen a lot. I like, I recognise a lot of stuff on his list. Like we said, Dangerous Liaisons with Michelle Pfeiffer and John Malkovich. I mean, I recognise The Grifters as well with uh, John Cusack in that. And I think he also directed High Fidelity as yes, well, yes, possibly he did. as well. Yes. Of John Cusack. I mean, I recognise that he'd done uh, the 2000 remake of uh, Failsafe with uh, George Clooney, which is a great black and white kind of Soviet america cold war kind of movie um and so like going into this i was like okay you've got some good work behind you let's let's see where this goes and i was very surprised because like i thought it was going to be really dark and really gritty but in some cases i was actually really laughing and then i found some of the things really relatable and then i found it found some of it really kind of surprising especially with uh, the main actor Oh yeah, uh, and he's great, and I didn't have any idea what to expect with this film. I had yeah. no idea what the story was about, who these characters were, were going to be. Uh, but uh, Chuetel Ejiofor, he's, we're introduced to his character of Okwe early on in the film. He's yeah. a taxi driver, and uh, I do like one of the lines he says right at the beginning where they're just like, are you with the agency? And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm here to uh, to help rescue those that have, that the system has failed. Yes, Like, yes. get in the cab, I'll take you where you need to go. And uh, But then he ends up at a hotel, and he's also got his suit, and he's and I'm just like, this guy's working two jobs. Like, yeah. He, like, how... Something must have happened that he needs to support himself or something else has happened in his life that he's just a workaholic. And so all this time I'm just like, what is this film going to be about? I have no idea. Yeah. And eventually he pulls a human heart <laughs> out of his toilet. I was like, <laughs> well, well that's, but that's the, that's the kind of the beauty of this film. It really set up his character. And like you said, you wanted to know where he's come from. Why is he working these two jobs? What is this weird green plant that you kind of see him chewing on all the time? You know, how the hell has he gotten himself into a situation where a human heart has found itself into the toilet? But it, that's what that's what I mean. I found it very relatable because he's... Too many human hearts out of the toilet. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. But, but he's an illegal immigrant who, who's working all of these jobs, you know, trying to keep himself busy so that he can save up his money so he can buy himself a passport, you know, trying to start this new life. You know, we 
we, we we hear about all these stories all of the time when you read them in the news and things like that. And that was one thing that really got me with this film was as as much as we like to pretend or, or, or talk about how like Western world, the Western life is actually better than some other corners of the country. But it's, it's so strange that the similarities from third world countries to, to the UK and Western countries are, are really there. You know, like how many jobs is he trying to work in this country to be able to make enough money so he can travel back to his former country that which he's running away from um trying to find out his 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 back history like you spent a lot of the film questioning what has made him come to this country but then as you start to uncover that he's got like skills as a doctor you know and he's also trying to help people the the taxi boss sequence <laughs> oh my god i the, the, the first one, I was just like, that's a bit awkward. But it was when it got to the second one, that's when I really laughed. And there's all the guys there, and they're just like, yeah, we all slept with the same girl. We've all got uh, problems. We've all got STDs. <laughs> Can we <laughs> get the same medicine, please? And yeah, it's like you see how much of like a good Samaritan he is in a way. Because uh, he's, he's best friends with Benedict Wong. Yes, yes. Uh, who, who's working in the morgue. And he goes to him to basically get uh, to, to get prescription drugs from basically off the counter. Yeah. Uh, that he's then helping out these other friends with. And I, uh, th I mean, there is a point later on where he's also called in um, because there's someone who's basically having a, like a like a fit. Yeah, and they basically find out that he's had an operation and he's not been an sewed up or looked after properly. Yeah, and they come, they come to him. It's almost like they all know that he's a doctor, even though he's trying to keep it secret. Yeah, because his hotel boss, Sneaky, played by Sergi Lopez, is onto him and knows that something's not quite right, or that that Okwi is not telling his entire backstory. Yeah, and and that's what I really started to enjoy. Like Okwi's trying to just do his work and and stay hidden and make his money because he doesn't want to uh, uh, you know bring suspicion from the immigration department because he'll get deported back to Nigeria or wherever he's from. He doesn't want to bring too much trouble to um, Audrey Tattoo's character, you know, Sine or uh, Shanae, um because. Like, she, she comes from Turkey, and she's an illegal as well, but, she, they're, you know, they're all just trying to work, and the, the little the little story idea is there that, obviously, if they make enough money, they can go to New York, where New York is, the, like, the mecca, the heaven that they want to get to, which I, I think is kind of beautiful, because there's that moment where he explains to Sinai that he's already been to New York, he used to be a doctor, and so he's been around the world, and in his eyes, you know, it's no different to being in London. You know, it's no different to being in your home country. The, the the world may look better, the grass may look greener, but it's the same fucking work. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> now, this is where the film sort of unveils to you that this is actually pretty much a love story. Yeah. About two characters that, that may or may not have these feelings for each other at this time, but coincidence and circumstance and basically sharing... You know, that commonality of being an illegal immigrant, you know, forced to sort of work or, or trying to work to make money illegally as well because they, they don't have work permits. So they're yes. not even allowed to work. There's a, an incident where the Bureau end up at her house trying to chase after Okwe. Yeah. And uh, they end up following her to her at the hotel. And he ends up trying to, inf you know, he ends up telling Ivan yes, to warn Ivan, her. The door and, but man. Ivan's already having sex with a prostitute at the time. He's <laughs> yeah. like, no, man, I've got two minutes here. <laughs> I, I, I love that aspect of the film as well. It's like, we're, we're following Okwe around the, the whole way through. Um, and so we don't really interact with many other elements that are going on in london well we also don't really interact with very many british sort of citizens in this game yeah, world at yeah. all they are all the immigrants they are all the people uh, you know that the society's like ignoring yeah you know and but, but a... they're there they're, yes, they're, they're, they're there yeah. cleaning your toilets driving your taxi cabs you know doing your work that you don't want to do and so that's what i really loved was the fact of while while we're following Okwe, there are things going on in New York and there are things going on in Nigeria and there are things going on in the high rises of London. But down here, where we think it's all dirty and gritty, people are still trying to survive. And so, you know, he yeah, you, you have that moment with Ivan and Juliet, uh, played by uh, Sophie Oconido, I think it is, um, who are recognised from Ace Ventura 2. Um, and Aeon Flux, I think it is. But she she's having sex with Ivan and then she... It, 
Okwe calls the phone and she answers the phone and gives it to Ivan. And Ivan's just like, what? What do you want? And so he's then got to come and rescue uh, uh, Sine before she walks into the hotel so that the immigration department don't get a hold of her. But that means she can't go back to work there. So she's going to go work in a sweat factory run by some dirty, gritty, you know, Indian. Not, not Nothing against Indian people, but he he's this sweatshop owner boss who... When the immigration department comes to there to get Sinai again, um, he thinks that the best way to try to keep her working or quiet is to force himself onto her sexually. And man, those those sequences are really awkward. Yeah. You know, because we've already had the stuff with, with Sneaky or one, you know, the, the, the hotel manager, and he's a sleazy piece of crap. And so you're wanting... You're wanting something good to happen. You know, it, it's strange, but you're, you're sat there just like, I want something good to happen to these well, people. That's why I really like the sequence when the two of them are sat like in a restaurant mm. and they're sort of bonding. And it's it's basically Okwe is trying to apologize because he sees her as an innocent and he feels responsible for her now being in this sweatshop, so yes, to speak, because yes. he was like, it was me who came to your house. It was me who who's done this and this. And because of these things, you're now here. And... And and she she does one. It's one of my favorite scenes in the film. Yeah, she does the cutest thing where she imitates him eating the green leaves like a cow. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and and it's just a beautiful moment between the two. And I was just like, there's like a weird attraction between these two, but the yeah. film's not going there. It's it, it's done very well because they, they they had that moment in the little hotel room, uh, well in their little apartment when he'd cooked dinner for her, you know, and she she she'd stopped them from having a key. For a long time, even though that she liked him being there. Well, she it? definitely doesn't feel safe with him because even when he's in the house and cooking, she's got the chair propped up against the door. Well, that, that's at first, isn't it? Yes. But then she she gets a key cut for him, and she starts to hear that he's a really nice guy, which and he's is helping out. what's super sweet. Watching their relationship blossom yeah. throughout the film. Yeah, I mean, because like I said, you have that moment in the in the restaurant as well, um, or in the cafe where you know he he tells her, "Look, you don't want to be with me." And Juan, Sneaky, has been going around trying to find out extra information about Okwe. And we start to find out that he originally comes from Nigeria and that he supposedly may have killed his wife. Now, I, like, I don't know if it was just uh, uh, Chiwetel's, you know, acting ability, but I didn't get any kind of violent tendencies from him. No. You know, whatever situation he'd been in in his previous homeland was a situation that he... It, it, he'd, he'd not brought on by himself. It was accidental or, or forced upon him. So then Sneaky turns to Okwe and says, hey, look, I'll get you in on my business. I basically bring people to the hotel, illegal immigrants, and I take organs from them, kidneys, livers, whatnot. You know, and that's where the heart has come from. Supposedly, the doctor that Sneaky had used accidentally killed their patient. And so... They flushed the heart? <laughs> yeah, like, what did you do with the rest of the body? Yeah, right. <laughs> like... Well, he's very sneaky. <laughs> he's very sneaky, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we knew there was something off when Okwe first came to him about the heart, and he was like, no, nah, we don't need the police. Like, here's here's 20, 20 pounds, just Well, it was the quiet. phone call, wasn't it? Well, yeah. I'll call the police for you. You can talk to them. Oh, wait, you don't want to because you're illegal? Wow, okay. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's kind of at a, a stalemate there. Yes. Uh, but, of course, the whole harvesting of body organs is where the film like narrative uh, will push these characters to where the things are going to go because otherwise this is just it plays out like a standard drama yeah it's yeah, very yeah. much a character piece yeah but with this sort of crime organization going on in the background that eventually becomes to the forefront yeah uh where okwe is literally being asked to perform this operation he kind of like blackmails him in a way doesn't he, he, he he's like here here's a photo of this girl she she needs a kidney. She's going to die. Yeah. So that's why I do what I do. I'm in the business of making people happy. Yeah. But Okwe is just like, he can see right through it. He can see the morality of all of the people that are basically being harvested. Yeah. And that, that that's where I kind of started to really enjoy and kind of relate to it. Because as much as Okwe has come from another country to the UK and is hoping that it's going to be different here... It's literally the same. There are illegal dealings going on in the street. People are having their body parts harvested, you know, and sold to other people on the black market because the family can't afford to get it or for whatever reasons. You know, Anokwe doesn't want to. 
he doesn't want to perform the operation but it's not like it's not like he doesn't have a choice he could say no but if he does it it does help a lot of people like you said sneaky says to him like you get a passport Okwe, so you get to go to wherever country i get paid so i'm happy and the person who sold sold their organ gets paid so they're happy so everybody's a win-win um but it's when like i said when when sanai has gone back to her factory um and the the owner of the factory tries to force himself onto her again she bites him you know and she says to Okwe, i bit down today i bit down you're like <laughs> yeah yeah you want to fight back um but she she still doesn't have anything she has nowhere to live she has no money she she uh, she tries to stay with Okwe in benedict wong's fucking hotel fucking morgue <laughs> autopsy i thought that was brilliant that you had you had mordo and wong sat in this morgue playing chess, playing chess. yes <laughs> you know this is this, this is like 10 20 years before, 20 years yeah. before they'll play doctor strange you know <laughs> and okwe's a doctor how weird is that <laughs> and they're gonna go to new york bleacher street is in new york <laughs> oh it's, it's mind-blowing um multiverse <laughs> yeah multiverse <laughs> But Sinai, uh, you know, she says, I'm not staying here anymore. And so she she heads to one because she he hears that he's going, he's willing on selling £10,000 for a, a liver or a kidney. And so that if she, I'm pretty sure it's the, ki I'm not medically trained, so I'm thinking it's the kidney that they don't need, um, livers you definitely need. I'd, yeah, yeah. Definitely one of the, he's going <laughs> to sell one of her body parts. Um, and... Tells Okwe, look, you know, she'll die else unless obviously you do the surgery because you're so really good. And so then towards the end of the movie, it's, it's things just start to line up. And maybe it's my experience from stories like this, but I kind of knew where I'd like the plot to go. Sure, yeah. And, well, the film does deliver that. It is quite satisfying. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wasn't quite aware of the twist that the film was going to take to get us to the point where Shanae is uh, in, in the bed, sedated. Yeah. Okwe's there with the knife, and he's just like, okay, we're going to do the surgery, but... Shaky, you need a drink because uh, I don't want you handing me a scalpel with your shaky hands cutting off my fingers. So yeah, yeah. take a boost, then we'll do this. And he's drinking and they're chatting and the, he's just like, yeah, we're going to be business partners, buddy. We're going to do this all the time. And passes out. Yeah. He got spiked. He and got then spiked. we find out that Shania gets off up off the bed. They swap him in his place and, the, and they do the operation. I was like, oh, yeah. wow. That, well, that's where I wanted the twist to go. After he, after Sneaky had forced himself on onto Shania, you know, like, like the whole, the film had talked about her being a virgin all the way through. Yeah. Um, you know, and how she'd never slept with Okwe, even though, even in Benedict Wong's eyes, look, she's in love with you. Um, and so, um, one, um, Sergi Lopez forces himself onto her and kind of takes her virginity. So this kind of enforces Okwe to want to take his liver which begged the question because I'm like, I, I like I said I'm not medically trained, but I'm sure that whatever liver you take has to be like the same blood type, or I don't know if that like it doesn't matter which. I'm sure liver with you kidneys, take, it's your fine. Kidneys or take, <laughs> so, you know, so we're just gonna take this man's yeah. and hopefully not give it to this little girl, like <laughs> you know, because medically i don't know how that works but yeah they they uh they get sneaky they knock him out they stick him on the bed they rope in juliet's character as well and uh, the, and they're in this hotel room doing the surgery like I, I did really like that where he'd gone to the hospital with wong you know and they'd gone around and they'd taken the all bits the different and pieces, bits and yeah. pieces and it was like it was like watching the a-team do a medical drama <laughs> you know we're gonna... doing a medical heist <laughs> yeah that's it where they're gonna boil in the hot water all of their medical yeah. equipment but it's, gonna... it's it, i mean there's a, a scene as well isn't it where the, it is just so unassuming where you're just like oh you see this guy with the mop and he's in the attire and it's just like yeah you know they just let them in just like <laughs> no you know. they don't just <laughs> let you in <laughs> they don't it's totally so... the film <laughs> the film world i watched him he like knocked on the door and the woman went yeah come in with this mop and bucket i'm like okay first off 
Where's your yellow signs? This is completely dangerous <laughs> while people are working. Secondly, where's this badge? He can be anywhere. And he just takes the medicine off the side and yeah. walks out. They're walking out with the, with the gurney, aren't they? And the blanket. They <laughs> knock it at one point and it nearly all falls off. <laughs> this is why we have CCTV cameras and security cards, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this was 2002. Yeah, it's a different <laughs> time, man. It's a different time. Well, I like it. I mean, Awkward gets all the information from one as well before he passes out. Like, oh, where are they going to come? Oh, they're going to come to the back of the hotel with the money. Oh, thank you very much. Knocks him out. You know, one yeah. kind of pulls up to the front. Uh, you know. Um, hey, Ivan, uh, here's some yeah, money. Yeah, Ivan, thank you, Awkward and, and, and Sinai said that they'd be leaving quite quick. So I'm just going to park here. The, the uh, They didn't shy away from the the operation either you know no. we did actually see some blood guts and some proper detail yeah the uh, practical effects there were all squeamish enough to make me go it feels too real yeah yeah that's what <laughs> i felt and this is not horror movie gore this is real and and <laughs> and he's there and he's, he's just like why are you sewing him up and he's like because he's a doctor he, yes he, he respects his patients and his patients well-being yeah um and i do think it's it's actually quite important because obviously when when they're leaving he tells them to, he tells Ivan uh, to call the police or call an ambulance in an hour from now yeah. and go to that room. And I was like, like, well, three things, really. Like, A, it gives them an hour to get away. Yes. Uh, B, it means he's looking after his patient yes. because he's a doctor. And three, it also means the entire operation is going to come down when the police get there and realize what's been going on. Yes. So I was like, bang, bang, bang. That's really like a victory for, for these characters because yeah. they're going to get away. Um, uh, but I also think there's a, a, a again I'm just going for another favourite scene already. yeah 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 um, but there's a scene when they are doing the, the trade off the money uh, for the organ and the, the guy doing the trade off is just like how come I've never seen any of you before mm. and it's like what you quoted earlier where he says we are the people you do not see we are the ones that drive your cabs we clean your rooms and suck your cocks yeah it's just like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Julia's like well oh, that's me <laughs> I was like oh yeah well yeah, but I was just like, it's a really poignant, uh, well-delivered line as yeah, well that yeah, really yeah. pretty much surmises uh, a, a lot of what, the, you know, the, the feeling uh, behind these characters. Yeah. Uh, and, and then this all builds into a really emotionally kind of weighted finale at it the does, airport. It does, yeah, yeah. Uh, where I wasn't expecting this film to sort of play on the heartstrings as much as it did at the end. Yeah, uh, and it was, yeah. I guess I was caught off guard by how much I cared yes. for these two characters uh, where you know she's off to New York, he he's off uh, back to back to his family. Yeah. And uh, but she loves him. He ca he loves her, but they can't have this relationship right now. Uh, and they the last words to each other, they whisper it as they get, both go their separate ways. So I was yeah. like, and he of course cinematic sunset finale yeah, he's yeah, walking yeah. off I was like that's really good well he'd already done the thing in the car hadn't he where he he basically told um, Shania about his history the, like he, he hadn't killed his wife what had happened was is in, in his uh, home country he was a doctor he was supposed to hide some evidence he didn't and his house was firebombed and his wife was at home at the time the police blamed him and so he fled the country um, which you know, like I said, it's, I find it very relatable because it's very easy to, to, to sit there with, you know, when you see people moving from country to country and illegal immigrants and you know, they're taking our jobs and all that kind of attitude. But you'll always find that there's always a reason why that person left. And it's because of some aggression or some violence that's been thrust upon them that they don't want to be in. And even though he's hid from it, once he's come to London, they, more violence and aggression has been thrust upon him, forcing him to do this other type of lifestyle. Um, but it's the revelation as well that he makes out that he's got a daughter and he really wants to see her again, you know. And so as much as he does, in a way, love Shania and he wants to be with her, he loves his daughter more and he needs to go make sure that she's safe. And he and it, there's that tearful kind of thing, which I thought Chiwetel did really well was just being on the phone at that final moment, talking to his daughter. Yeah, it was very tropey, very Hollywoodish that, you know, everything's worked out at the end. But I, I wanted that. Yeah, it Netflix needed it. It needed it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I needed some happiness in my life at the end of this. Or, Jesus Christ, I would have turned it off at the heart section. <laughs> right. Just be like, oh, look, heart. <laughs> well, Ian, did you have any favourite scenes from Dirty Pretty Things? I, I had a couple. Um, uh, when he's talking to um, uh, Sneaky about the heart, you know, he's trying to do a good job. He's found this thing. He's bagged it up. He's brought it to the manager. The manager's drinking before he's even started the job. Um, but it's the way that the manager turns around and says, you have nothing. You have no rights. You're an illegal. 
Uh, you know, why are we even questioning who this heart's from? You know, he's just trying to brush it underneath the, the carpet as quickly as he can. But, it, you know, you can see from Okwe's, he's just like, I, I don't, I can't leave it. But the but the manager's like, you will. I'm, I'm going to force you. And then you have the whole phone bit where he's just like, talk to the police. Nope. Okay, I'll put it down. Uh, the, the taxi drivers all having the clap. I mean, it was it was funny seeing the boss. And then, you know. But he's just like, I need the medicine, you know, for the wife. It's yeah, for the yeah. Wife. I can't, like, pissing, you shit. pissing fire again <laughs> for a week, you know. And then he comes back the second time. And there's four of them all lined up pulling down their pants. And he's just like, oh, she's a very popular girl. <laughs> it's just like, oh, gross. Like I said, watching uh, Wong and Mordo um, playing chess. I think Benedict Wong is really good. Maybe this is why I'm still watching Marvel movies, is that he can just make his characters fun. You know, like, even this guy, the character that he's in, Guan Yi, I think it is, like, he's not in it very long. He has some kind of poignant moments with uh, with Okwe. That moment where he's throwing all the stuff into the furnace, yeah. and he's talking about the heart and why people do this and trying to rationalize it. I was like, man, that's just really great acting. I need to see more of him playing Wong because... He makes things funny, makes it believable. I just got wrapped up in this little world. And for uh, for a final one, as gross as he was, I did kind of like the sweatshop boss or the actor playing him. Um, not the sequences he had with Sinai because that was really disgusting, like taking her off into a little corner and doing things to her. But it was the point where the boy comes running in and screams, police, and everybody runs out. And he just sits there. Yeah. And the police come up and go, we're looking for this person who may work here. And the guy looks around and goes, who works here? Nobody. Yeah. 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 There, there's loads of great, great actor moments in this film. And most of the ones I've mentioned already. But yeah, the scene where he says, we are the people you do not see. Great, great line delivery. Great, great moment. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, but I liked uh, Shanae uh, imitating him eating the green leaves yeah. at, at the uh, the cafe. Love that. She looks so cute there. I'm like, <laughs> she's come a long way from, I mean, be, well, for this film, she'd only done Amelie like the year before. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like such a contrast between these two characters. Uh, but yeah, she she was really great here. Um, I also really liked the, the, the one of their first scenes together where Okwe's preparing dinner for her. Mm. And uh, she comes out of the bathroom. And she's like, you've turned the taps on these, control everything. She's trying to have a bath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but all the way to when they actually sit down and have this dinner together. And it's much quieter. It's more intimate. And I'm like, this is the beginning really now of their relationship. Yeah. Uh, and so I just thought there was some some great acting in in that scene the airport ending my god that scene was so good their their delivery uh, like even though most of it was what wasn't said yeah it was all in the eyes it was all in the way they held themselves yes uh, and just her you know steadfastness as she ends up with her passport with her papers she's almost shell-shocked and traumatized as she's going through uh the you know the procedure to get on this plane yeah uh, it's just like, oh, like she sells that really fantastically well yeah ian do you recommend dirty pretty things i i do um i mean it's probably not the film that you would find on the top of your list to watch you know sci-fi horrors action adventure you know comedies they all kind of take that but this was just a really good entertaining piece of drama you know it does um from for me as an experienced uh film watcher it did go like i said towards the end with the twist of taking out the manager which i kind of hoped because we wanted something bad to happen to him um but then when it does you're like yeah okay i'm 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 on board with this i, I think all of the actors and actresses really pulled their characters uh, together they really made this universe work even though we only saw a few of them you know there's just this whole universe going on around them and they're just tiny tiny little parts in it so yes i definitely recommend it yeah i'm also going to be recommending dirty pretty things as i found it highly entertaining backed with a terrific cast great script and wonderful direction the film explores the lives of those living on the fringes of society in a gritty view of London, highlighting the struggles of just surviving, where you might just need to sell a kidney to make it. Yeah. The drama that unfolds is really compelling. The characters feel real. Chiwetel Ejiofor and Audrey Tattoo were both equally fantastic, and you really care what happens to them in this dark thriller, packed with great moments of love and loyalty. Against a backdrop of corruption, abuse, and 
despair. On a technical level, the film is brilliantly shot, well lit and edited, and has a really good pace. Every scene is used for maximum effect with no wasted time. Now, this is not a film I'd normally choose to watch for myself, but I'm glad to have seen this. And I would say to everyone that this film is absolutely worth a watch. Watch it for the great performances. Witness the struggle and the will to survive, uh, and with dignity intact about characters that are true to themselves. Some things are too dangerous to be kept secret. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. If he's an atheist, I'm ruining a suit no one will ever see. If he's a Buddhist, I'm giving him eternal happiness for the price of a piece of thread.